about to start recording. And uh, the washing machine went off. I want to have a quick chat, a sensible chat, really. Realistic chat about uh, antennas because, well, we've got the UK, UK and the USA. In the UK, some folks, and there was a comment on my web, on the, the channel the other day, some folks th think we need what we call planning permission, all right, in the UK. In the USA, that's the kind of HOA rules, folks, okay. But if you keep it real, in the main, you won't upset anybody. You can enjoy HF from a small back garden. We call it a back garden. You'd probably call it a backyard in the USA. And it, this isn't about clickbait stealth, right? It's about scale and shape and, and being considerate. And I've, I've got, I've got the, I've got my Radcom, which I haven't uh, from the RSG. But I haven't opened it yet, but it seems to have a really nice back cover here, so. We can draw some some pictures in, in a minute. So in the UK, USA, the principle is the same. Most issues don't start with planning officials or HOAs. They start with visibility, right? So let's talk about a sensible, simple antenna setup that works well, but keeps a low profile. OK, so for getting out properly, especially on the upper bands, say 20 metres and above, a simple vertical genuinely I'm talking for modest stations now, it's hard to beat. So, you know, six, seven metres, 25 feet, give or take, is often below um, the rooftop height when viewed from the road. And the, the whip bit at the top, if it's like a, like a fishing pole type uh, design, it's thin, it just disappears into the sky. And most people never notice it. In fact, if you spray it white, it becomes almost impossible to see. And you can home brew one as a test. It's not hard to put up a test vertical for 20 meters. I mean, you can buy, you know, DX Commander, but, but I, I'm not here selling today. So let's have a quick word on why the vertical works well on the upper bands. So for DX, what really matters isn't power. It's the angle the signal leaves your backyard because low angles travel a long way and high angles come back down nearby. All right, so on let's say take 20 meter band and you have a simple vertical it could be held up with a tree a fiberglass pole it doesn't matter and you remember the center of the coax goes up the middle and then you've got the braid of the coax and we're going to put some verticals down uh, radials down so we'll put eight down just as a test okay the length of this by the way if you've got a metric tape measure and it's insulated wire is probably going to be 4.95 meters long Whatever that is in inches, ask Google. So then what happens is when we transmit, now this won't be perfect, right? But we end up having a bubble of RF. Well, it's not bubble actually, it's more like wings. Uh, going out like this and our peak gain is over there. Okay, here, right, there's the peak gain. And at five degrees above the horizon, right, you will see if you could measure it, it is actually uh, about minus 5 dBi. It's just a number. Don't worry about it, all right? I'm not doing all the modelling for you. It's ridiculous. But there we are. So any vertical will do that. Okay. And the more radius you've got and the higher the ground is, this, this um, donut, in effect, will, will come down more and more. This, this will come down. So you get lower and lower angle. And if you actually buy the ocean... You'll get the best, you know, it's almost like, you know, all your gain is going straight out. That's fine. But as you can see, we've got a hole at the top here. All right. Now, so that's why for high angle stuff, well, which I'll come to in a minute, doesn't work very well. Now, a horizontal antenna, by contrast, depending on the height of the ground, but let's just keep it real. You know, it's not very high, right? Sends most of its energy upwards. And that's brilliant for local and regional contacts but not ideal for long haul DX. So we'll take your average Joe inverted V dipole. We've got some coax coming down here, by the way. There might be a tree or something that's holding this thing upright. And there's the ground. And let's say this is a quarter of a wavelength off the ground. It could be 40 meters. I mean, that could be 10 meters high. It's quite high. That's 30 something feet, all right? But anyway, keep you that. What actually happens if you could see it is your RF will look a little bit like a balloon, right? So there's a hell of a difference between our vertical and our dipole is that a lot more of our energy is going straight up, certainly in this bit, right? 
So this bit here, right, which is inversely proportional. <laughs> I just made that up. I'm not quite sure, but you can see that the opposite is true on the vertical. So this is for 20 meters, if you like, and that is for 40 meters. Right, that's the nut. That's in a, in a nutshell. You still get some low angle, all right? You can still cross, you know, the Atlantic or get a few, a couple of hops, but there's not quite as much gain off the bottom here as there is on this one. So even six feet off the ground, right? Perhaps running along a fence line works beautifully. Daytime chatting out to two or 300 miles is easy. And in the evening you get wonderful one hop skip. I ran my 80 meter dipole about three meters or sat 10 feet or something off the ground for years at Holly Farm. And in the evening, I regularly worked Germany and Italy and Spain, a thousand miles, you know, it worked. And if the SWR or the impedance is a little bit out because it's so close to the ground and you're not a high power user, just hit the ATU button, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really care, right? The impedance match, the mismatch is so small. Another option is what I call the potato shaped loop for 40 meters. Uh, you can go this side now. <laughs> so, uh, just take my address off here in case that comes out. A potato shaped loop. I mean, I'll just, you know, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. The point is that is going to be roughly for the 40 meter band, which is actually about 42 meters. This is going to be, depending on the height, it's going to be about 39 meters all the way around. And let's say we put a feed point here. That will be a four to one ballon, by the way. Uh, and then what you can do is you can just cut out a section, a roughly about seven feet, uh, two meters. Cut out a section, replace that with paracord, all right? And have a little bit of wire with some cro crocodile clips to short it back together. And that's you on 40 meters. If you're 80 meters, you can take the croc clips off. You just reach up, take them off, right? And now you're on 80 meters. The fact that it's got a four to one ballon here doesn't care, right? <laughs> It's so low to the ground and everything, it's absolutely fine. So there's two bands and one antenna. I mean, it's a bit of a hassle, right? <laughs> but it does work. Oh, I ran that for a couple of years here as well. And this, if it's, uh, I can't say about the potato loop, but certainly a triangular route, route um, and put a four to one ballon there. I've got one of these at Holly Farm and the one hop low to the ground. I, I'm talking, you know, between the first and second floor. I mean, it, it's like, well, I can touch it. All right, if I stand there, I'm getting one hop. Fantastic signals, one hop. In fact, sometimes I think I'm on the Yagi because it's so strong. But that's the Delta Loop. Again, it's, I think that was 39 meters long as well. Perfect tune. And that gave me 40, uh, 20, 15, and 10. I could have done that little trick as well, taking a bit out here for, you know, for 80 meters. I don't need to. Uh, there's one more piece of the jigsaw. Uh, John Gender and I discussed this. I will try and find that video and put a link in the description. We were just, we, 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 there was no prepared agenda. We, agenda. we were talking about a modest station and what you, what you would, you know, the ideal yeah, um, antenna setup to have in the back garden. And in the end, actually, when we distilled it all down, we said we were only allowed two pieces of coax or something, whatever it was. It was a vertical and something called a loop on the ground. Now, you can do a search on the internet. Uh, they, they call it big L, small O and a big G, loop on ground. And that is um, what, 15 feet, so that's four meters. And I've got one and I'll put a link to that down there. And there's some demos on that. That comes with a little transformer. I can't remember what that is, nine to one or something. And coax, you know, back to the shotgun. That, that does 160, 80, and 40 really well. <laughs> I'm super surprised. And it's amazingly low noise as well because it's on the ground. It's buried under the blooming leaves, to be honest. And that's fantastic. Now, modern radios make, actually make this idea really easy. So the TS590SG has got a little receive jack in the back of the, the radio. I know the FT, sorry, the, the IC7300 Mark II, that's got a receive jack. So you can put your main transmit here. And if it's early evening and you've got your vertical 
and you want nice low noise chit chat with folks, you can switch in the other piece of coax to your receive jack and listen to people really easy. And that does great for shortwave band, just general purpose listening. It's fantastic, really good. Two coax lines. I, I would, I would, I would do. In fact, I would run three. <laughs> I would run one for my vertical. I would have always have a, some sort of loop two, and then I really like this loop on the ground three. So I'd run three eight coax lines, or a switch, or something like that. Whatever, I'll let you decide. You can, so you can, dem genuinely build. You could build all this for for next to nothing. Actually, this is just the bits of wire, isn't it? You need four to one ballon. I do recommend these days, and I've changed my mind now. I think we need uh, some choking as well, just to stop your coax listening to too much baloney and electrical noise. That might that might help. Uh, but doing that, you'll still work the world. You'll still have a laugh, and uh, I hope that's just added a little bit of value to you while it's pissing down the rain outside. <laughs> Enjoy your radio. All right, bye for now.